Howdy, everybody. Welcome back to Accounting 1101, where we are wrapping up our work on the closing process. We get to the end of the accounting period. It could be the end of the month, maybe the end of the year, whatever we're using. And it is time to wrap things up and close the books. And we've been talking in our last couple of videos about that entire process, and we've come to the end here. We've already talked about what accounts get closed. We've talked about understanding what closing means and how to do it. And we've made all the closing entries based on what we had in our adjusted trial balance, haven't we? We've done all that. We haven't even made a reference to the old song, Closing Time. Remember that song from a, a few years back? I, I can't sing it because I don't want the YouTube copyright police on my tail. But, you know, if I say that, maybe you got the tune in your head. You can go Spotify that one. Uh, the adjusted trial balance is where we get the information to make our closing entries. You may recall those closing entries required us to close out the revenue accounts. They required us to close out all the expense accounts back to zero and also the dividend account. So once we've done that, our adjusted trial balance as it stands, you know, it still has all those numbers on it. And so we can't really just leave that. We got to make another trial balance to kind of show the fact that some accounts have been closed out. Now, after we make the closing entries, our T accounts are going to look like what you see right here. All the revenue accounts, all the expense accounts are going to have a zero balance, as is that income summary. All of that information, along with dividends, has been dumped into retained earnings, as you can see right here. Income summary, dumped into retained earnings. Dividends, taken out of retained earnings as well, right? So, the post-closing trial balance, you're looking at it right there. It looks like every other trial balance that we've made. But you'll notice no revenue accounts, no expense accounts, no dividend accounts. Where did they go? Well, they're all zero. And typically, we don't put accounts with a zero balance on the trial balance. So they're gone. That's a good indicator that you're looking at a post-closing trial balance if you don't see the income statement accounts. Must have been closed out, right? So it's the exact same concept as we've done in our other trial balances. We're just taking the ending balances, putting them on the trial balance. The only difference is revenue and expense accounts are gone. They've been dumped into retained earnings. And retained earnings has the latest and greatest updated number because all the net income or net loss was dumped into it and dividends were run through it. So that retained earnings balance is the updated new and improved retained earnings figure after all that work is done. So post-closing trial balance, really nothing new as far as putting it together, a few things to keep in mind. No revenue, expense, or dividend accounts are going to be on it. They all have a zero balance at this point. They've been closed. They're not going to appear on the post-closing trial balance. Retained earnings is up to date thanks to the closing entries that we made when we took income summary, dumped it into retained earnings. When we closed dividends out to retained earnings, it updated the retained earnings account. And now that updated amount is shown on the post-closing trial balance. And of course, it would not be a trial balance if the dang thing didn't balance. It would be a trial unbalance, and that's not even a thing. So trial balance is in balance, debits equal credits. We have three count them, three different trial balances that we do at various points in the accounting cycle. The unadjusted trial balance, the very first one we do, we use that to kind of be a jumping off point for our adjusting entries, also to ensure that the accounting system is in balance. The adjusted trial balance, we use that to create our financial statements and the closing entries. Of course, we prepare the adjusted trial balance after we've made our adjusting entries. Finally, what we just looked at, the post-closing trial balance is going to show you the updated retained earnings amount. It's not going to include revenue expenses. Those have been closed. It is really, for my money, the final step of the accounting cycle. And then we ramp up to do it all over again the following month or period. So there you have it, the closing process. Hopefully, uh, between the three videos, it gives you a good idea of what you need to do to close the books out at the end of the period. If you talk to anybody 
in the accounting game that does corporate accounting or maybe governmental and has to do month end close, they will tell you that that is a very busy time of the month. A lot of work gets done at the end of the month in the accounting world. If you have any questions about the closing process, maybe you're working on a homework problem, maybe you're trying to figure out what's in the reading, or uh, you have a question about what I'm talking about in the videos, feel free to look me up. I would be happy to help anytime. We'll see you back here for the next chapter. In the meantime, take care, everybody.